Hey everybody, Jason Blaha here with Ice Cream Fitness. I've been getting quite a few questions on this topic and I do know that there are some of my subscribers and people who I interact with on forums who are using ketogenic diets. I have myself in the past experimented with these quite a bit so I'm coming from a point of experience and I even went back to a ketogenic diet for a while to help try to control some of the symptoms on my Meniere's disease and so this is something I have a lot of personal experience with and something that I have very heavily researched on the nutritional science end and so I want to get into it a little bit and give you guys some details and discuss the topic in a little more depth. But hold on, let me give you guys a bicep shot first. I've titled this video Low Carb Diets Good or Bad and so just to draw a little more attention to it I'm not going to go into a lot of details covering all low carb diets in this one. I'm going to stick mostly with the ketogenic diet because there are two basic types of low carb diets. There's very high fat and very high protein ones. And the problem is that a high protein diet, a super high protein diet, that version of it where something like 80% of your calories is coming from protein, almost no carbs and maybe 20% fat is the same thing as a high carb diet any excess protein that your body eats is going to be converted into glucose which is carbs by your body anyways you're going to get the exact same effects in your body overall in terms of body composition performance and so forth as if you had just eaten carbs you're going to get the same amount of insulin response because protein is actually extremely insulinogenic you're going to need the same amount of insulin to deal with all this extra circulating blood sugar from the protein that's converted into carbs anyways. All you're doing when you, when you do that type of diet is you're basically the only upside you could possibly get from that would be a little more satiation from the protein itself. But what you're doing is just limiting food choices and paying a lot more money for carbohydrates because all of the protein you're eating is just carbs anyways. You would have gotten the exact same effects had you just eaten, instead of all of that protein, the amount you're eating at that point, had you just eaten rice or pasta or ice cream or something, you would have gotten the same end result. So that type of diet is just, it's, it's kind of silly. It's just unnecessarily restrictive and expensive by comparison to just filling those same calories with carbs. So I'm not really going to go into a lot of detail on that. What I do want to cover is the, is the higher fat version. This type of diet, while it is extremely useful for therapeutic purposes for certain types of medical conditions, the problem with it is, is that it's been highlighted as an effective fat loss method. And a lot of quacks and people have put out a lot of material on it such as Gary Tobbs and I think Michael Eads and obviously Dr. Atkins and others. And this has been really heavily promoted as some magical means of fat loss and as having some metabolic advantage. And the idea behind this metabolic advantage is of course that you, your body is using fat for fuel and that it's producing all of these ketone bodies that it doesn't burn for fuel and it can take it a while to adapt to burning them for fuel so that you'll have a short period of time where you're excreting unburned calories in the forms of ketone bodies. The problem is that this has never really been proven. This metabolic advantage hasn't really been found under very serious controlled laboratory studies when things are controlled closely. And please guys don't start linking me a bunch of bullshit studies to where it's self-reported data to where the researchers themselves that didn't measure and weigh out the foods that people ate and it's just self-reported that's completely useless to us. But when studies are done correctly there's never been the metabolic advantage found and the other flaw with this logic is that it would be a prolonged effect if it did happen. If, if it does happen that way and, and this, it works that way the body is very very good at adapting to fuel sources and adapting dietarily to efficiently use calories and what will ha what what would happen is that your body would very quickly just start using all of those ketones for fuel. So if it had that metabolic advantage, it, it would disappear, I would guess, as quick as three weeks. It would be completely gone. So there's no real metabolic advantage to this type of diet. There's no real evidence showing that there is. And a lot of what this diet tries to do, and it, and it is helpful at first for people who have insulin sensitivity issues, However, if you're training hard, and, and again, as I've covered in other videos on these topics, if, if you're training hard, your insulin sensitivity is going to improve very, 
very rapidly. And if you've been running something like my novice five by five program that I have up, and you were insulin insensitive and borderline hypoglycemic before that, you run a program like that for five or six months, that is generally going to correct itself and your insulin sensitivity issues are going to be gone. Insulin sensitivity is generally created by being sedentary. People who are athletic and engage in regular intense physical activity are very, very rarely insulin insensitive. And if they are, they're about to become diabetic or they already are diabetic and they just haven't been diagnosed. So if you, if you run a program like that and you're still showing signs of insulin insensitivity, you need to see your doctor because you're probably right on the edge of becoming diabetic or you've already become diabetic and you, you're going to need medications rather than trying to use a dietary method to, to fix something that you may not be able to fix on your own. And that's part of the problem with this, this type of diet is that it it's, uses a shortcut as a band-aid to try to deal with a lifestyle problem. And that problem is that, is that people are sedentary and they don't train and therefore they're insulin insensitive. And yes, it can work for people who are insulin insensitive in the sense that they will have far more stable energy levels, more stable blood sugar potentially, better appetite control, but that's a very short-lived thing because I guarantee you it is far easier to get in and start training every day than it is to cut carbs out of your diet. Furthermore, obviously, you still have to carb load on any of these type of diets to make them work because ketones in and of themselves, their protein-sparing nature has been vastly overstated. They do not compete with carbohydrates in this regard or with the insulogenic response of carbohydrates in terms of their ability to spare protein and spare muscle tissue. Carbs are an absolutely amazing means of preserving muscle tissue on a cut. And I would say that it's vastly superior to dietary fat for this purpose once enough dietary fat is consumed to keep hormone production optimal. So carbs are the hands down winner here on this and so when people try to use that logic I'm just telling you it doesn't work the, the data isn't there the evidence isn't there and when you observe the diet approaches that a lot of natural competitive bodybuilders use you don't see very many successfully pulling it off doing these low carb diets and if they do do them it's at the very end of their cut it's not something they would do for a prolonged period of time because it just isn't protein sparing enough to get the job done. And then going back to that also the other issue there is that most people are dieting so that they can look better and when you run a ketogenic style diet you look like crap other than on your carb ups. You, your muscles look flat, they don't look full, you look fatter than you actually are on the days where you're carb depleted and your muscle glycogen is low. So then you, you've got that element to consider with it that for at least five days out of the week, you're not going to look your best as a result of this type of diet. Then we get into the potential problems of it. Well, it's been promoted very heavily in some circles of the fitness industry and in circles that discuss these type of diets is they discuss the, the lower circulating insulin levels. And again, as you guys know, I've covered in my insulin video that this is better controlled by being a conditioned athlete and actually training intensely than it is by manipulating your diet to keep circulating insulin low through having insanely high insulin sensitivity. But they don't always address the, the point that protein is in, in and of itself very insulinogenic, just as insulinogenic as carbohydrates are. And that's somewhat addressed with the ketogenic style diets where protein is kept moderate instead of very high. But the problems there is that you don't even get enough protein to, to really properly build muscle or spare muscle ideally even with that type of protein intake because yeah your protein numbers might be close to what would be recommended on a higher carb diet by experts but the problem is that because you're not getting any dietary carbs most of the week your body is having to convert at least half of the protein you're consuming into glucose for your blood sugar and to get some muscle glycogen and training fuel because you cannot burn ketones for intense physical activity. It cannot be done. It does The pathways do not exist for that. You have to burn glucose for all intense physical activity such as you know any intense conditioning work you're doing and particularly your weightlifting. So you've got that issue with it 
So if you mess up those carb refeeds and you don't get them big enough or long enough or frequently enough on this type of diet, you're going to lose muscle tissue as a result. The other problem is that while I've pointed out before that dieting on low fat diets that are too low in fat can reduce testosterone and other sex hormones in the body, so they have negatives. Low carb diets are notorious for lowering thyroid function, which again, if you're trying to lose fat for, for a prolonged period of time and, and make long-term body composition changes, you need to be aware that lower carb diets will slow your thyroid down more quickly. And particularly, they slow down the conversion of T4 into T3 more quickly. So it's something you need to be aware of if you're going to mess with this type of diet. So there is a hormonal downfall to it. The other thing that isn't addressed by these, these people is the role of insulin. It's not, or not addressed correctly. And what I mean by that is that insulin is viewed as somehow the primary fat storage hormone by the people who try to demonize carbs and try to promote this type of diet. And the problem there is that that simply isn't true. Insulin is a general transport hormone for the body that plays a lot of roles but for the vast majority of people, insulin itself hasn't really resulted in the direct creation of most of the adipose tissue they have. I mean, I hate to break it to you guys, but here in the real world, that's really not how most people get the body fat that they have. It isn't as a direct result of insulin. And your body does not need insulin to store dietary fat as body fat directly. It, it does not need it at all for this. You could have zero circulating insulin in your body and still be gaining body fat very rapidly during a period where your, your insulin levels are almost zero. The body has another mechanism called GLUT4 transport that will automatically, without the presence of insulin, take all excess dietary fat and store it directly as body fat because it doesn't really have a means available to break it down into glucose to store in your liver or muscle cells so it has to go to your fat cells. It doesn't really have much choice other than a little bit of limited uh, triglyceride storage in your muscle tissue. So this idea that low circulating insulin levels are going to prevent or reduce the, the rate of dietary fat being stored body fat is absurd and it's not really based upon correct nutrition or correct understanding of, of human physiology. It just is true. It's not, the, it's not the mechanism by which it happens. So it can be the mechanism that allows de novo lipogenesis to take place, which is the conversion of dietary carbs into body fat. But this is actually a much rarer occurrence than most people realize. The majority of the body fat that you carry for most people on a typical diet is actually a result of the, the excess dietary fat they ate when in a caloric surplus. Now, the carbs themselves contribute to this in a manner, but I don't have time to cover that in this video. But yes, the, the dietary carbs do contribute there, but it has more to do with, with their contribution So the reality is, is that you do not need insulin to convert dietary fat into body fat. So the, the whole idea behind this type of diet for fat loss is, is fairly flawed. And the people you see who have success on it, it's because of the appetite controlling effects, the, the, the limited food selection, and all of that adding up to help them create a caloric deficit. And that's the method by which it works. But for people who are hard training individuals, this is not ideal. Dietary carbs are absolutely critical for achieving peak performance in, in the gym, gaining strength and muscle quickly, for optimal preservation of muscle mass, and for actually keeping glycogen stores full so that you actually look good. So realistically cutting carbs out of your diet if your goals are actually aesthetic related and you're not just a sedentary person who's trying to lose a bit of weight and looking for a shortcut just really isn't a wise idea i wouldn't recommend it and in my personal experience my experiences with my own body and observing others the science does seem to be right and that it isn't actually the best way to go about things and a higher carb diet will produce better results for fat loss for individuals who are doing hard resistance training. 
it will actually produce better results because you will have better gym performance, you will have better muscle sparing while maintaining the same caloric deficit. And I hope this has been informative. Hold on, let me give you guys another bicep shot. And I'll talk to you next time.